kind of talked about at one point in 2020 how the path wasn't exactly clear, right? You didn't know that Cure Foods would evolve in the direction that it did. Yes. And I think still to this day, it's actually quite interesting that you guys are doing multiple things. So yeah, you've got the cloud kitchen model, which I think uh, the assembly line is sort of the way that you yes. uh, make things run efficiently, which is really cool. And there's a lot of different brands, but that's more of the customer side, right? Internally, uh, like you said, there's yes. maybe actually just like uh, a couple of different kitchens. Yes. Um, but then there's also two other things. One is sort of offline, right? And there are a couple of offline locations yes. from the brands that you've yes. acquired. And then also you have this sort of, the only way that I can think of it is kind of like, uh, like an Amazon Prime platform. I don't know, it's like Eat Fit, right? But there's a subscription model yes. in a way. Um, where I guess people can get uh, gain access to discounts yes. and special perks. Yes. Um, what's what's the let's let's talk a little bit about business strategy and, right. and sort of these different uh, verticals. Right. So I may say that there are four uh, business units, if I can think of uh, different sizes. Seventy five percent revenue comes from our cloud kitchen business. Like I said, two fifty cloud kitchens in the country now. Uh, servicing uh, over 16, uh, 18 cities. I will leave out the last seven where we just have one one kitchen right now. So otherwise we're in present 25 cities, but 18 cities with meaningful present presence and uh, minimum brands per store being four. Uh, uh, I think if I talk about our brands in Cloud Kitchen, Eat Fit, Cake Zone, uh, and uh, uh, Eat Fit, Cake Zone are the two largest brands. Uh, I think they are 60% of our Cloud Kitchen volumes, and then we have a long tail of. Uh, brands, of course, not long tail, long, long long tail of revenue, but uh, some of those brands are offline first. So I'll talk about them. But then we have Sharif by Nomad, Pizza, uh, Frozen Bottle, which are the next three brands in terms of cloud kitchen volumes. So I think these five brands uh, take up 80% of our cloud kitchen volumes. Like I said, it's an assembly line where uh, a lot of work gets done in the central kitchen. Food is sent to the cloud kitchens, and a lot of uh, cloud kitchens, you know, just service the order as and when they come. The person in the kitchen may or may not know which brand are they making it for because they're building, uh, they're, they're cooking for a recipe, an A product, which is then shipped out later in the respective brands boxes. That's the first business. The second business is uh, the subscription business, which was pretty big during uh, each fit, cult fit days. And now it's a much smaller part of the business, uh, about five to eight percent business. But I feel it's a business for the future. I genuinely believe that you know people in future will cook much lesser, and the subscription business is almost like outsourcing your daily food. So we have about seven, eight thousand subscribers every day who subscribe. So even at seven, eight thousand, we are a pretty meaningful subscription platform. But given that other value volumes are so big, we are not able to like do a lot of justice to this. Uh, vertical yet we are trying to beef up the team belief there is to build something like amazon prime where you can customize subscribe two meals a day one meal a day etc it is like a seven on ten product right now we are improving it as we speak i believe that in a 10 year time frame it will be like a top 20 percentile of our customers will be there even today all our super users sit there uh, some of the customers order like 30 meals a month some of them order 50 meals a month. So that's almost 10x of the overall uh, platform average. So that's the second business. I believe that uh, there will be a time when people really don't cook at home and it's pretty possible. See, cooking at home is very, very tough. And you have, like, if you're living in a thousand square feet house, you're actually earmarking 10% of your space for a, a, for, a, for a place where you're only spending like 5% of your time in the day. Then you have to get raw materials every day. You have to get a cook every day or you have to take time to cook. Then it's more of your time, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it's just super tough. It's like uh, very, very unproductive, but of course it has to be done because there is no credible healthy food platform out there right now. And I believe that Eat Fit subscriptions has a chance to become that. Have you heard of Soylent? Uh, I have heard of it, of course. I was one of those subscribers. Okay. So I just, I would have Soylent delivered to me. And but that's... that was the meal replacement. It was not like a proper meal. Yeah, it? yeah, no. Yeah. And it was like yes. the, I just loved it because I yes. didn't have to worry about <laughs> cooking, but yes. I also didn't have to worry about even like eating. You yes. know, it's like, it's done in like, yes. you know, five seconds. Um, but it's a little extreme, yes. I know. Probably yes. Indian people love their food, so that yeah. might not be so the So our largest selling product in our subscription is, like I said, the Indian three compartment platter. Uh, dal, roti, sabzi, that's it. That's what I used yes. to eat yes. from, from Eat Fit during yes. the pandemic was yes. the veg dali. Yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no brainer. Like sometimes you may get food fatigue, but at ho my answer, whenever my team says that customers have food fatigue, I ask them the same question. At home, I grew up with like five dishes. So maybe, 
<laughs> it's different when you're ordering in. But yeah, the third third vertical is the restaurants. Uh, earlier, it was a uh, just a uh, ancillary business because we acquired a couple through acquisitions. But then Sharif Bhai Biryani, which is our largest biryani brand and uh, is amongst the top five biryani brands in the country now, it's scaled really well. We figured that biryani is an occasion, uh, especially in the southern part of the country. And people eat out biryani as a family outing. They eat out as a celebration, team outings, whatnot. So uh, we set up a couple of locations last year and they just went berserk. And uh, since then, we opened twenty more locations across uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, and they're all doing really well. Offline dine-in locations. Offline dine-in locations, and we believe that for biryani category is there. One new format that we're experimenting and we're really, very, very happy with the success is the Nomad Pizza. So Nomad is our really luxury from a price point point of really luxury pizza. It's a twelve hundred rupee product. And you have a nice, really nice location in yes. Indranagar. Yes. Yes. So we have four, uh, four or five of them now across Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, and it's not going to be a large strategy. It's a, more like a marketing strategy for Nomad brand because when people go on Swiggy and Zomato and see a twelve hundred rupee pizza, they're like, oh my god, like what is it? And then now they can correlate to that store that it's representing. So that's the third business uh, scaling well. Uh, the fourth. A vertical is where we are spending a lot of time now, and we know that cloud kitchen is steadily growing. But I don't expect it to grow 4x in next 10 years. I think it will be like a 3x in 10 years, and from there on just stable because internet ordering is not going to be a 100 city phenomena. It will be a 50 city phenomena, and India has 250, 300 towns with meaningful population. So how do we cater to the last 200? Uh, Sh- Sharif Bhai Biryani, of course, can go to probably 50, 75 of those, but uh, it's a very South Indian flavored biryani. It may not uh, cater to North India, and we don't want to change the taste. It is very, very genuine, whatever it is. I love how much variety there is in the biryani space. Yes, yes, yes. Seriously, every sit- state has three to four biryanis. Not like so. Karnataka alone has four different variants. You know, so so uh, what we are now experimenting is a small takeaway or a dine-in format. Like Subway, like a smaller cafe coffee day, etc. And we're trying two, three different categories there, uh, with different brand names. They're all experiments right now. We have a bakery, uh, you know, which is like a cake zone store, where you can just get a loaf of bread and uh, some baked items and muffins and tea tea cups and all of that. So that's one format that we're trying. Uh, we have a few stores in Chennai and Bangalore uh, doing okay. Then we are trying the HRX format, uh, you know, which is an online brand for us. It's a it's a Eat Fit subscription category. But yeah, now, it's also on your subscription yes, platform as well. Yes, but now we are well. trying to unbundle it and bring it offline. The first store is here uh, in HSR. It's being inaugurated by Ritik Roshan today, incidentally, and uh, uh, we believe that it has legs. But again, I feel that it's definitely not an answer for the last 200 cities because healthy eating may not be the answer. We have chanced upon one product and uh, seems to be doing well now. We have expanded to 25 of those outlets. Is rolls and wraps. I think for some reason there is no scaled up rolls and wraps player in the country. We have burgers, pizzas, chicken, Chinese now with wow, etc. But no scaled up rolls player. It's very. It's almost like Indian meal in a single hand, right? A single hand thing. And it can be a sloppy roll with gravy or just dry roll with cutlets or whatever. So we're experimenting that 25 outlets in Bangalore, extraordinary results. If that becomes big, or if it or it has to become big for us to cater to the next hundred cities. Otherwise, we are cooped into this 30 to 50 city business, which itself will be pretty big. Like right now, I said we're doing 60,000 orders. I believe that in these cities, we can do 200,000 orders. But then from there on, we will probably just grow 10%, 20%. But if we have to continue this 50, 70, 50 to 70% growth, we need some growth vectors for the tier three cities and beyond. 